Hi folks, welcome to Vito's Astro Forum. My name is Vito Urlemans and in this video I'm going to explain how to set up this Skywatcher Star Adventure 2i Pro and I'll show you some first tracking tests of this interesting little star tracker. So let's go! So the first thing I want to show you is that that Star Adventure 2i Pro it easily fits a sports bag or a backpack so it's super easy to take with you on a holiday or a camping trip. Now in this case I put my camera, an EFS 55-250mm lens and that Star Adventure 2i Pro in a sports bag. I think the total weight was about uh, maybe 3 kilos or 6 pounds. So it's super easy to take with you on, on a camping trip to a dark sky location without actually breaking your bag. So that's super nice of course. Uh, let me also show you what is in that Star Adventure 2i Pro pack. So on the left you can already see a bull head adapter for a DSLR camera. I have to say that uh, that ball head itself, it, it, do, it does not come with that Star Adventure 2i Pro pack. I bought it myself. Uh, but the connector, the green connector you see at the base of that ball head, it does come with that Star Adventure 2i Pro pack. So let's zoom in and uh, I will show you in detail what is in the package when you buy that Star Adventure 2i Pro. So the green connector at the base of this ball head is included in the package. You can also see a counterweight, a counter bar and a special plate to mount a small telescope or a camera. I will show you how to do that. Uh, this is the main star tracker with different tracking rates shown on that dial. And on the right hand side you can see the base of the Star Adventurer. I have to say that a tripod is not included in the Star Adventure 2i Pro pack. You need to buy that separately. And of course the first thing you need to do is to polar align your Star Adventurer. So when you're in the northern hemisphere, you have to put that tripod uh, roughly into the north position. If you're in the southern hemisphere, just put it in the south position. So you can see here that it is super easy to mount that base of the Star Adventurer to a tripod like this. It's a 3 8 of an inch connection. And the next thing you need to do is to put the star tracker into the correct latitude position. You can find that out yourself using uh, GPS on your smartphone. Now I'm at 52 degrees latitude, so I put the star adventurer into the 52 degrees latitude position using these knobs, it's very easy. And after you're done with that, you can mount the main tracker on the base of that star adventurer. So at night you can remove the caps from your Star Adventure like this uh, to look through your poloscope. And there's also this external illuminator you can position on your Star Adventure like this and use the dial, dial it to the max. Uh, in order to illuminate your poloscope, and I have to be honest here, this thing is a little bit flimsy. Now, anyway, you have to look through your poloscope and, and use the altitude azimuth bolts on your Star Adventurer to align your uh, Star Adventurer with either the North or the South Celestial Pole. Now if you're unsure where the North or South Celestial Pole is, you can download the Star Adventure console app and uh, use the Polar Clock utility that shows you where you should position Polaris, uh, the North Star, or where you should position the constellation Octans in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, after you're done with your polar alignment, you can uh, of course put the caps back on your Star Adventure. So you can connect uh, a camera or a small telescope to your Star Adventure in different ways. So the first way I do it is uh, by using that 3 8 of an inch uh, green connector. I have placed a ball head on that connector and on the ball head I have placed my DSLR camera like you see here. Uh, I have to warn you that your DSLR camera has a 1 4th of an inch uh, connection so you cannot directly put that DSLR camera on that green uh, 3 8 of an inch uh, connection, you need that ball head. Now the second way to do it is to use this special plate that comes with the Star Adventurer. Uh, you can put a counter bar and a counter weight uh, on that plate, like you see here. You first have to remove the safety screw of the counter bar, uh, after which you can place a counter weight on your Star Adventurer. And so uh, yeah, it simply works like this. You can also see a 3 8 of an inch bolt at the bottom of the green 
plate, um, you could use that, uh, that screw to mount a small telescope also. So yeah, after you have installed that counterweight, of course, you can put the safety screw of the counter bar back on, uh, on that counter bar basically. And what's really nice about this plate is that it also includes a one fourth of an inch connection at the top here. Uh, and you can just put your DSLR camera to that, um, yeah, using that connection basically. So it is important to balance your uh, star adventure when you're going to use that counterweight and counterbar. So you can loosen up the axis of the star adventure by turning that black ring. And then of course you have to reposition your counterweight until the camera is correctly balanced, as you can see here. Now, once you are satisfied with the balance, you can then re-tighten that black ring again. Just turn on it and tighten the axis of your star adventure like this. So if you're working with this setup and you don't have a ball head, you can turn on these two black uh, knobs or black screws to fine tune the position of your DSLR camera. So you can just simply turn them left and right to yeah, fine tune the position and put the object that you want to photograph into the center of your field of view before you start uh, tracking that object in the night sky. Uh, I think this is a pretty nice way to align your camera with the target you want to photograph, but I still have to, to do more testing to be sure if this is really a good uh, way to go. So tracking objects in the night sky is super easy. You just use the dial and so there are different tracking rates available. So the star icon is for tracking deep sky objects. The sun and the moon icons are for tracking the sun and the moon. You also have an astro time-lapse option and other time-lapse options available on this dial. And you can also remote control your Star Adventure 2i over the, sky, the Star Adventure console app um, via Wi-Fi. Now, if you want to turn the star adventure off, just turn it off and it just stops tracking. So I first zoomed in on the sun with a 250 mm focal length lens. And of course the sun was behind the clouds. Don't ever do that when there are no clouds. And I tracked the sun for about 45 minutes. And as you can see, the sun pretty much remained in the center of the field of view. And during that same night, uh, I also tracked the lunar tracking rate by uh, using that same 250 mm focal length. Uh, you can see close to a full moon here. And this is the time-lapse video of that. Uh, I think I tracked the moon for about 45 minutes also. And there's a little bit of movement, but in general, the moon pretty much stayed in the center of the field of view. So I am pretty excited about these first two tests. And of course, I will test this star adventure in the future. Thanks for watching. If you have any additional recommendations on how to set up and use the Star Adventure 2i Pro, leave a comment in the comment section so we can all learn from one another. If you like this video, please consider to like the video and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video and clear skies.